I think the whole idea of e-com and DTC, Gotham, what you were talking about with NatureBox, I think is super interesting. I think just the number of conversations from a garage group perspective that we've had with clients, there's in some cases, they see the, the opportunity to leverage it and it's an interesting thing. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that we've talked to that either see it as DTC and e-com, it's not like kind of my part of the business, somebody else is taking care of that and or they maybe feel threatened by it. And how, if, if you're in those roles, whether it's insights, brand management, et cetera, like what's the encouragement for them to see that as a massive opportunity to, to continue to get insight and continue to move the business forward? How should they be thinking about that? If you guys were in those roles, how would you guys be thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, it, from, from my perspective, the way I would be thinking about it is like, what's the cost of being wrong around e-commerce? And you know, I'm, I'm sure 10 or 20 years ago, nobody thought people would be buying CPG products on Amazon, but you know, Amazon's going to drive more than half the growth in the CPG world over the next five years and only continues to accelerate because of COVID. And so, I, I mean, I think the, the thing I would um, posit to CPG, you know, companies or executives would be what's the cost of being wrong on that decision, right? I think it, it regardless of whether you think it's a scalable opportunity or not, and this gets back to, you know, the constraint of scale. But regardless of where you sit on that fence, it's a capability. And I think we can all agree it's a capability that you want the organization to start to build, right? And, and so, I, I, you know, I view it as like it's, it's sort of a no-brainer to me that, that some part of your effort should be focused on building this capability, regardless of whether you view direct-to-consumer e-commerce as a channel that can ultimately scale, because the cost of being wrong is just too great. So, so that's kind of how I, I would view it. Yeah, and the two additions I kind of put on that, because I think it's, it's a great frame to have, is investors think with you're making multiple bets. You know that every single one is not going to be right. And you know, I'll use the example, one of the companies I worked with about two years ago is a company called GoPuff and was introducing them to a lot of CPG companies. And at the time they were in 24 markets, they were just emerging and time and time again, the answer would be, well, the scale is just not there, right? You know, it's just not, what do we do with it? Well, fast forward in just 24 months, they're now in 125 markets. They've raised $750 million from SoftBank. Like, they matter. And they also remember the people that weren't willing to talk early on and the ones that were. And those that took the early bets, there's a loyalty there. And you miss it now. And so the cost of being wrong in that, there are going to be some CPGs that miss out on that channel in a massive, massive way because they were thinking about the scale today instead of the scale tomorrow, uh, which I think is just a horrible mindset to have. Um, when you look at it. So you need to think about those. How can you place the bets? And I think the, the second one is COVID should have opened our eyes, the danger of over-reliance on a single channel. You know, I've had more businesses than I want to think of that they had a single channel that they relied upon and that channel wasn't an essential business. And guess what? They had zero sales for two months and it was outside of their control. So you need to be able to have multiple legs of your stool because you just don't know what the world's going to throw at you. You know, so if you're not putting yourself in that control, you're asking for a whole lot of hurt. And I'll just kind of add one stat. Sorry, Dave. You know, I think the GoPuff story is an incredible one. Even a more recent stat is, you know, over the last two months, Instacart has overtaken uh, Walmart as the number one, you know, kind of mar in terms of market share of online grocery, right? And so I just think the world is moving faster than ever away from atoms to bits. And if you're not playing that trend, I, I just... Uh, you know, I don't know what more data you would need to be convinced of that. 